Magavanan folks. This is your boy Kamal once again, and today we have the integral of, yes, you guessed it, something I cooked up because I was bored, what else do you expect? So, we have the integral from 0 to infinity of absolute value of 1 plus ix squared squared dx, where, yes, i is the imaginary unit, because why the hell not? So, how exactly do we begin our attack of this integral? Well, one interesting fact is that the gamma of z bar equals gamma of z bar. Which is very trivial to see using something like the Weierstrass definition of the gamma function. So this is going to come in handy quite a bit. This and the fact that z modulus squared equals z times z bar because we are integrating the squared modulus of a complex number. So we'll expand the integral i as the integral from 0 to infinity of gamma 1 plus i x squared times gamma of 1 plus i x squared conjugate dx. Now, making use of this little thing over here, we have the integral from 0 to infinity of gamma of 1 plus i x squared times gamma of 1 plus i x squared conjugate which of course works out to 1 minus ix squared dx. And I know it doesn't look that much better, but trust me, this is way better. The reason for that is, well, we know that gamma of terribly, sorry about that, z plus 1 equals z times gamma z, which implies that the target integral is now the integral from 0 to infinity, of z here is just ix squared, we have gamma of ix squared again, times gamma of 1 minus ix squared dx. And now we're in a position to invoke the beautiful reflection formula by Euler, which is gamma z times gamma 1 minus z equals pi over the sine of pi times z. So if i here is equal to ix squared, we have gamma ix squared, terribly, sorry about that, times gamma 1 minus ix squared equal to pi over the sine of i pi x squared. And some more complex analysis is going to come in handy because sine of i times z is actually i times the hyperbolic sine or sinh of z. So this implies that gamma i x squared times gamma 1 minus i x squared is actually pi over i times the sinh of pi times x. Okay, cool. That looks nice. Oh, dear me, pi x squared. Terribly sorry about that. So what does this mean for the target integral? Well, that means our target integral i does have a factor of i outside and is now the integral from 0 to infinity. Pi over i is just a constant. We still had an x squared term over there somewhere, times that reflection formula jazz. So we have the sinh of pi x squared dx. The i's cancel out. And now we have an integral that is that looks a lot different than the one we started off with. But still, it looks extremely cool. So we're on the right track. The hyperbolic sine function is defined as e to the z minus e to the negative z over 2. So the sinh of pi x squared would be e to the pi x squared minus e to the negative pi x squared. Terribly sorry about that. I got rid of the i's way earlier. And this is actually quite nice because it implies that the target integral i is now 2 pi times the integral from 0 to infinity of x squared over e to the pi x squared minus e to the negative pi x squared dx. Longtime viewers of the show know that I love invoking a geometric series whenever I get the chance, so we'll do exactly that. This is 2 pi times the integral, terribly sorry about that, from 0 to infinity of x squared over e to the pi x squared minus e to the negative pi x squared, and I'll expand it using e to the negative pi x squared so that I actually have a convergent geometric series, so that we now have 2 pi times the integral from 0 to infinity, x squared times e to the negative pi x squared, 
1 over 1 minus e to the negative 2 pi x squared dx. Now for the geometric series, recall that 1 over 1 minus z can be expanded as the sum over k from 0 to infinity of z to the k. So this is valid for absolute value of z is less than 1, which is of course valid for z equal to e to the negative 2 pi x squared on the positive half of the real line, that is. So this implies that 1 over 1 minus e to the negative 2 pi x squared is now the sum over k of what exactly? Oh yeah, it's e to the negative 2 pi k x squared, which does look dope. And this further implies that the target integral is now 2 pi times the integral from 0 to infinity of uh, what exactly? Oh yeah, we had an x squared term somewhere, then we had this e to the negative pi x squared term there. Now we have the sum and this is what it looks like with the k at the end. Do not forget that. I'm going to need it. Uh, these two are independent of the index variable k, so we can take them inside the summation operator, and we have 2 pi times the integral from 0 to infinity of the sum over k now of x squared times e to the negative pi x squared can be factored out, leaving behind 2k plus 1 integration with respect to x. We can now switch up the order of the integration and summation operators to write this as 2 pi times the sum over k of the integrals from 0 to infinity of x squared times e to the negative pi x squared times 2k plus 1 dx. I know, I know, all of this looks absolutely gorgeous and it only gets better. So we're going to let, let's see, I'd like x here to equal t over root pi times 2k plus 1. So I have some nice cancellation up in the argument of the exponential function. This of, co this of course implies that dx equals dt over root pi times 2k plus 1. And the limits are of course unbothered, which implies that i here is now 2 pi times the sum over k of the integrals from 0 to infinity x squared would be t squared over pi times 2k plus 1. We do have an e to the negative pi x squared times all that jazz leaves behind e to the negative t squared. We do have a new differential element accompanied by a factor of root 2k plus 1 times pi. And these two are independent of the t variables. We can take them outside the integration operator. So we have 2 pi times the sum over k of what exactly? 1 over pi times 2k plus 1 all to the 3 halves times the integral from 0 to infinity of t squared e to the minus t squared dt. And we could now invoke another transformation to get back the gamma function. That's right, we started with the gamma function and we're almost ending it with the gamma function as well. So we're going to let t here equal root u, which implies that dt equals 1 over 2 root u du. That t looks absolutely horrendous, terribly. Sorry about that. And I think we're good to go now. So this implies that i here is now 2 pi. In fact, we do have a pi and a root pi in the denominator. And then we have a sum over k of 1 over 2k plus 1 to the 3 halves of the integral from 0 to infinity of t squared is now just u. We have e to the minus u. We do have another factor of 2 uh, with the differential element, so that's 1 half outside, that is. Cancellation. Always welcome. And then we have u to the negative 1 half Okay, cool. So this is just u to the one half times e to the minus u du, which we recognize terribly, sorry about that, as gamma of one half plus one. In other words, one half times gamma of one half, which of course is one half times famously gamma one half is root pi. And we're good to go.
And wait a minute, the root pi will actually cancel out further, so... That was not exactly welcome. I was hoping to keep at least one factor of pi somewhere. Anyway, so we still have a factor of one half outside, so I guess that counts for something. Times the sum over k of... I could factor out two here. So I do have one over two to the three halves, k plus one half to the three halves. And that means I'm left with... What exactly is that term now? Something's wrong. Oh, dear me. I think I've counted this thing twice. Indeed, I have. I think so. Or have I? One half, one half outside. Ah, I think it's good. I think it's good. At least I hope so. Yeah, I guess it's all good. Terribly sorry about that. I'm bad at math, so I got to keep checking my arithmetic. So what do we have then? We have 1 over 2 times 2 times root 2 outside. And we have the sum over k of 1 over k plus 1 half to the 3 halves. Outside, this sorts out to 1 over 4 times root 2. And the sum is actually a very special function. It is uh, sort of like the elder brother or the more generalizable brother or whatever. It's the cousin. However way you want to relate it, this is the zeta function, but a special version of it. It is the Horwitz zeta function. I hope I did not butcher that guy's name. Uh, it is the Horwitz zeta function evaluated at three halves. And the other argument is this one half over here. And the normal or the regular, it's not exactly regular, the very special Riemann zeta function is just the Horwitz zeta function with this other parameter called alpha set equal to zero. And I think this is the first time on the channel that we've invoked this version of the zeta function, the Horwitz version, that is. I hope you enjoyed the video. This was another addition to my list of my ever-growing list of favorite integrals. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Drop me a follow on Instagram as well. Thank you. See you next time.